Hi, my name Hello. is Ingmar Schumacher. I'm a professor of environmental economics at Epoch Business School in Paris, France. On today's episode of Express Views, I'm very delighted to have Professor Kees Wittagen. Kees received his master's degree at Tilburg University in 1974 in econometrics with a specialization in mathematical economics. He got his PhD in 1984 at the University of Tilburg and he is currently an Emeritus Professor of Environmental Economics at VAU University Amsterdam, Department of Spatial Economics in the School of Business and Economics. He is also a Fellow of Tilburg Institute and Center at Tilburg University. Hi Case, thanks for being here today. Thank you Ingmar, it's my pleasure. Case, I'm sure you know what the Express Views are all about. So Snowboy Fike is a tennis game. I throw a question at you, and the first answer that gets to your mind is the one that you throw back at me. Are you ready? Go ahead. Okay. Case, could you please briefly introduce yourself? You already did so, but my name is Case Wittagen. I'm 70 years old, and indeed I'm a military professor, to my regret, because the, dis the Dutch system doesn't allow to stay uh, longer at the university, but I still have some kind of uh, host hospitality, so I can enter the university, use the library, etc., etc. And I often do because I feel still uh, very much affiliated with the university life. So, what do you see as your major role as a professor in environmental economics? I think. Uh, there are two important aspects. As a professor, you bear some responsibility for the people with whom you work. So you have to give all opportunities to your students, PhD students, uh, assistant professors, to develop themselves. And I think that's a very important uh, task that you have. The second thing that comes to mind is that uh, as a professor, you have to define important topics for research and for teaching. And uh, this is important uh, with a view on the, on the future development of the field that you are a professor in. Very nice, very interesting. So despite the fact that you started your, your career with econometrics, uh, you're working mostly on optimal control theory. What do you believe is the major contribution of optimal control theory to environmental economics? Well, I, I must correct you. I'm not working on optimal control theory. I never <laughs> proved any theorem from that uh, discipline. But I, of course, amply use uh, optimal control theory. And the reason is very simple. Uh, almost all environmental problems have a dynamic aspect. Think of uh, sustainability, non-renewable resources, biodiversity, climate, all are developing over time. And what you want to know as environmental economists or as politicians is what is the optimal development over time. And for that, uh, optimal control theory or dynamic programming is a very important uh, tool. So that's why I use it uh, often, because all the problems that I am very much interested in have uh, a time dimension. Very interesting. So what is your favorite article in environmental economics? Well, there are many, <laughs> there are so many. But if you force me to pick one really important article for me, then it is the, the article by Dasgupta Gupta Hill in the 1974 special issue of the Review of Economic Studies, because there they, they set the stage for a lot of work that has been done since. It has to do with sustainability, non, the role of non-renewable resources, substitutability between factors of production, and all these issues are still very much relevant in the present uh, era. That's actually also the article I started off with, so uh, okay. <laughs> I totally agree with your choice. Uh, what book should every environmental economist have read? Yes, Th that's a very easy question. 
And I, I thought you would ask me something like that. So I, I can show you. This is the book. And again, it's uh, Das Gupta, Das Gupta Hill. These are really my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, authors. In that book, they bring so many things together. Uh, things like non-renewable resources, imperfect competition, general equilibrium, dynamic, uh, dynamic equilibria, um, uh, environmental policy. It's really great. Uh, and it, again, it is the foundation of much of the work that uh, has been done in environmental economics uh, since uh, since then. Because, you know, we, you can say maybe there are three waves. First, the first wave was on uh, the role of non-renewable resources when it comes to sustainability. And you know that's all based on the work by the Club of Rome. So that's one thing, the role of non-renewable resources in sustainability. The second wave was about taking this into account in, this, in discussing market structures. So if the market is not perfectly competitive, what will happen with sustainability? And then the third wave is uh, incorporating all these insights in the issue of climate change. And I think that uh, the book by this Gupta and Hill, they already go into sustainability, they go into uh, uh, imperfect competition. And uh, of course, uh, well, it's a natural consequence that we also use these insights in the study of climate, uh, climate change economics. Yeah, I can only fully agree with that. Um, Good to hear. <laughs> What do you think is your biggest contribution to environmental economics? Well, <laughs> I, I want to be modest. Uh, uh, you shouldn't be. <laughs> well, I, I would like to say that uh, my best contribution is still to come. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that's not really uh, what's going to happen, probably. But what I, what I like very much is some work that I did recently with uh, Hassan ben Chikru at uh, Montreal and uh, Gerard van der Meijden, who is at uh, VU University. And uh, there we investigate the, the loss, the welfare loss of uh, the oil market not being, uh, not being uh, competitive. So we have uh, OPEC on the one hand and a large number of uh, small oil and gas suppliers on the other hand. So the market is not perfectly competitive because OPEC has some uh, market power. And one of the outcomes, many things come together here. One of the outcomes is that in an equilibrium in the cartel fringe model, in this setting, there will be there will be intervals of time where there is simultaneous use of oil from, let's say, cheap resources like Saudi Arabia and more expensive resources. And of course, we all know the Herfindahl rule saying that you should extract the cheap resources first. And the cheap resources of oil are also the less polluting ones because the tar sands and so on are very polluting. So there is a welfare loss following the fact that we have uh, simultaneous use and uh, what what uh, what we find is that most of the welfare loss is not due so much to the fact that OPEC is monopolist but it's mostly due to the fact that there is simultaneous supply of uh, cheap and uh, and uh, and more expensive oil and the welfare loss includes here of course the the climate damages that are done and I think that brings many things together from game theory, general equilibrium theory, uh, environmental economics, climate change, and so on. Yeah, I, I really like that paper. I know it, of course. I still hope you'll be able to continue to publish at, the, at that level. I hope so too. I hope so too. Uh, what do you think is the most pressing environmental problem and how can it be solved? Well, <clears throat> most pressing is, of course, uh, climate change. And uh, to be honest, I am very pessimistic 
regarding the solution of this uh, problem. So you can think of negotiations, but they don't work. You can think of uh, a supranational power, but that doesn't uh, exist. So for the time being, uh, we have to rely on uh, unilateral actions, and they can have some effect also from a psychological point of view. But I, I'm not so sure whether that will bring us uh, close to a, to a solution. And I think that uh, the younger people well, should get more voice in the policy uh, debate, and uh, we should better listen to them. And happily, there are initiatives also by young people themselves to give them more to say in the debate on climate change. And I, I fully support that. So then if you could be the Dutch environmental minister, what would you want to change and why? I think that uh, we can get things done within the European Union. And uh, once the European Union uh, is kind of unified in terms of uh, policy, then as a union, as a, as a bigger region, they can have an impact on what's happening on the global scale. So the first thing I would do as a minister is to to try to get Europe, uh, let's say, uh, unified on this topic. And actually, um, that's something that is already going on. But, you know, I'm in the Netherlands and we are really lagging behind when it comes to use of renewable energy. So I should be very modest as a minister also. <laughs> Which environmental economist do you admire most and why? Well, <clears throat> if I give you 10 names, there are 90 colleagues who feel that they are not given enough justice. So it's it's very difficult. So, of course, there are people that are, are exceptional, like uh, Nordhaus and Stern, uh, Hotelling. Well, but uh, when it comes to people in my area, it's very difficult to mention a few people. But... Well, I have I've, I've had many excellent uh, co-authors, uh, like Rick van der Ploeg, Gerard van der Meijden, Aarte Zeeuw, uh, Hassan, uh, Wenshi Kroon, uh, Guy Asheim, Tapan Mitra, and again, I, uh, Gerard Godet, Michel Moreau, I just can I can go on. So you just <laughs> look at my list of co-authors and they are all excellent colleagues. And I right, so let, me, let me ask this a very political answer, <laughs> but most likely true also for your case. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me ask this slightly different. With whom would you like to write your next article and why? Well, I, like I said before, I have been writing a lot with many colleagues and uh, I would like to renew uh, co-authorship with uh, almost all of them. And actually, I am now writing uh, with, uh, with, well, with few of these uh, people, and, but I don't have any special preference. No, if people invite me and that happens to be co-author, then my answer is also, well, I will be glad because I've been working with you successfully over the past, but uh, I can only participate if you think that I make a, con a substantial contribution, otherwise I'm out. That's, a, that's the right approach, yeah. No, it's better maybe to ask who would like to work with me than the other way around. <laughs> well, I'm sure that would be an even longer list, so... I don't know. <laughs> so, let's go a bit more personal. Um, do you believe in God? Why or why not? I, I don't believe in God. And I cannot say why or why not. I just don't believe in God. Okay, so we have to solve our own problems. Yes. Yes, but even if you believe in God, then still you have to solve your own problems. I guess so, yes. So we have to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, 
If you could spend one hour with a person of your choice, who would it be and why? Well, there is one person with whom I spent uh, more time than, than one hour. And uh, that's, <laughs> that's fine, that surfaces. Okay. Case, please help me to complete the following sentences. Optimal control theory for me is uh, indispensable in doing uh, research in environmental economics. If I could turn back time at maximum 50 years, I would. Yeah, uh, I would uh, do more on, uh, on, uh, on physics and chemistry. I would like to know more about uh, all kinds of processes that uh, that take place in nature and in in space. And uh, that's something that I, I really miss. And I'm happy to have uh, people like Rick van der Ploeg, who are physicists by training, and they help me a lot in understanding what's going on. But still, uh, if you learn these things uh, when you are 17 or 16, they, uh, yeah, it's much better than when you have to do all the learning when you are 70 or 60. The study of environmental economics is... It's great. <laughs> well, for me it's great because, you know, as you said, uh, I am a mathematical economist by training. I must say that in the 60s, mathematical economic, economics was nothing more than what, let's say, ordinary economists learn today. It was just a little bit of differential equations and so on. So it was not, uh, not as good as it is now. Uh, but um, for me, I, I liked uh, general equilibrium theory. And for me, in environmental economics, Everything that I learned from mathematical economics came together. I could use everything what I learned in an applied field like environmental economics. And that was a real pleasure. Theoretical research and empirical work are? Yes, they, 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 they should be connected. No, let me say this, uh, no empirical research without a sound theoretical basis and no theoretical research without the prospect of being applied sometime, somewhere. So, uh, la pour la sounds nice, but uh, I'm not, well, I'm not advocating uh, la pour la what I think is not a very good development nowadays is that uh, empirical research uh, gets uh, privileged or priority in journals and there is not enough uh, attention anymore for, for theory. And I think that is uh, that tendency, I, I don't like that tendency so much, but maybe that's because I'm an old guy. Maybe it's just because you like theory more. <laughs> yeah, but it looks as if uh, people think theory is not important, and I think uh, it should be giving should be given uh, credits also when you do uh, empirical work. So, yeah, I think that's a very nice takeaway lesson. Yeah, definitely. Case the last question: Life on planet Earth in two thousand and one hundred will be. It will be hard. It will be hard for almost all people, and it will be hard for, especially hard for people in developing countries. I'm afraid that uh, inequality uh, will grow. And uh, well, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm afraid I'm not.
Yes, I definitely hope that uh, we can do something about this. Case. Thank you so much for this. I really enjoyed hearing your answers. I hope we can be a bit more optimistic on some of them in the near future, but I find them truly interesting. I invite those of you who would like to get more details about Case, his research and his ideas to take a look at my Meet Top Environmental Economist interview with Case. And you can find that on my website and on YouTube. Kes, thank you for having been here today. Uh, it was a true pleasure. Okay, thank you very much. It was a pleasure for me too.